Hello, everybody. My name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson. It's a pleasure to join you. We're talking into next week. That's right. Tax day could be quite taxing indeed. A storm rolling out of the Rocky Mountains will bring a potential for severe weather to the central plains for a couple of days, even into Tuesday. And we're talking a chance of some snow for some on the cold side of this system through the Rocky Mountains and into southern Canada. Will that impact our northern plains areas? Well, it looks like a pretty unsettled pattern after we get through a very warm week ahead of this. Let's get right to the details. A little about me. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for liking the videos and I'd love to have you go ahead and subscribe right at the bottom. Make sure you hit the dingleberry down there. That's the bell to be notified when I am here with an update for you. Now let's take a look at one modeled uh, uh, representation of the lower 48. Well, not only that, let's look at Canada too, because we got this big swirling area of low pressure off the Aleutian Island chain, and that's going to send a few waves our way. And as we go through the middle of tax week, you're going to see it right here, getting started, low pressure moving through, wrapping snow around the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains. That's the system of focus. Anything beyond this gets a little bit tricky, but we can say this, extremely active weather for you in the southern portions of the state of Alaska as well. There you go. Now, here's a look a little bit closer at the details with regards to what we are expecting to happen here with this system. I'm going to pause this so it's not looping over and over. And we see that as the low pressure system works out of the Rocky Mountains and you're looking at tax day on the 15th, storms firing up in the afternoon and evening hours will impact Texas, Oklahoma, into parts of uh, Arkansas and Missouri. As this storm lifts up to the north, we could even see some stout thunderstorm potential for states farther north than that as well. This will continued to work its way through in the overnight hours and the well situation kind of reloads with the next step off to the east as we go into Tuesday. You'll see the storms firing here. This is from the Mississippi Delta straight up into the Great Lakes. Notice what's going on in the northern part of the United States here. We're talking about that risk for some very heavy rain, but we'll take it. Much of Minnesota in some pretty significant to severe drought conditions across the northern plains. Look at the mountains of Montana possibly picking up some snow. The main threat though, the big highlight will be the severe weather threat. And here is what my friends at the Storm Prediction Center have to say. They're in Norman, Oklahoma. They're the experts and they're seeing the same thing Hutch is seeing with regards to areas of concern. Let's get right to that. As we take a look at their uh, highlighted area here, this is literally for the day on tax day. And where we see the 20, uh, excuse me, 15 and 30 percent areas, this is so far out that we can't get too specific about all of the uh, uh, areas of concern, but there's a 15 to 30% risk of some severe weather. Notice Oklahoma right in uh, the bullseye, the center of the activity, but it does spread all the way north into parts of Iowa. And I think we could see some concerns even farther north than that for some severe potential into South Dakota, maybe Southern Minnesota as well. This is for Monday. Notice the valid date there. And we'll keep you highlighted right here on Hutch's weather. How about a look at this day? This is Tuesday as we go through. That risk shifts east, focusing on the boot hill of Missouri and most of Arkansas, the hills of Texas, all the way north into the Great Lakes. This is where all of Illinois, Iowa, and even southern Wisconsin will have a risk for the potential for severe weather. That shift should continue and and track to the east with this storm, but models are showing a little bit of a trend toward this system lifting more toward the north and towards Hudson's Bay. Let's take a look now at a couple of the, uh, after we've seen the risk areas, where we see models and the comparison thereof of different models that go out that far. I must advise you, all the models are not agreeing on the intensity of this, but many of them do agree that a Colorado style low will roll out of the Rockies and simply the inherent moisture that will be available in the central plains will mean that we'll have that risk for potential strong to severe storms. Let's take a look at the European model from the United States view, and then we'll dive in a little bit closer as we get into this. The European model here is Hutch's favorite as a meteorologist forecasting weather for the better part of 30 years and teaching it in the classrooms as well. I can tell you this, that, well, the European model does a little better job, is a little more consistent on days three and beyond from day to day. Now, it doesn't mean it's right every time, but it's definitely been more consistent over the last few years. Here we go on tax day in the afternoon, low pressure moving out of the Colorado Rockies right here in the morning on tax day, and then storms firing in the afternoon on a 
a line, as you see here, from basically parts of southern Nebraska straight down into Oklahoma and Texas. It's these initial cells that will have that potential to be discreetly severe. All modes of severe weather will be possible with this particular setup. There's shear in this type of an environment, and there are some areas of selected enhanced shear. Right here in parts of Kansas, we have what looks like it could be a triple point, a warm front meeting up with a cold front right in this area. And those could have some enhanced spin. And again, that's right up there in Kansas, spreading down into Oklahoma and Texas. We'll have what looks like a potential for a dry line uh, type of instability to initiate storms there. These cells move rapidly to the north and to Iowa. And I am concerned about eastern Nebraska, Iowa, even southern Minnesota, as we continue to see this area that looks a lot like a triple point working its way northward. Now that's Monday night on tax night. As we go to bed, those storms move off to the east and mainly become a wind threat. And then the gun reloads, if you will, uh, as we go into the day on Tuesday on this European model. And here is Tuesday midday and watch the afternoon storms firing all the way from Louisiana and Arkansas straight up through Missouri, particularly from Columbia, Missouri through St. Louis and North. We're talking about all of the state of Illinois being under the risk of some very windy thunderstorms. Even this early on global scale model shows this backward C shape to things as the storms collapse and accelerate with very gusty wind potential. So that second day on Tuesday could be a windy one. Now this model here, the European model does show much of a snow threat with this system on the backside until we get into the northern great lakes region but as we take a look at the american model one more time that's what we were looking at before on the black map to begin check this out we have the same timing with storms and the same location central texas central oklahoma and into kansas those storms lift northward but really the strongest kind of lock up down here in the south and continue to rumble through places like joplin okay southern missouri springfield on into parts of oklahoma including tulsa and oklahoma city then it lifts north as we go into the wee hours of tuesday morning Notice Notice this model has a secondary low developing up here in parts of Saskatchewan, and that will round its way through and bring a risk for some snow showers to the northern plains. It doesn't look too heavy, but in the Rocky Mountains, we could have some significant elevated terrain enhanced snowfall potential from that. That is, again, the American model. So here's what we can take from those two models, that the timing looks to be there for the severe weather threat in the Central Plains. The track looks to be very similar with those. The question mark is with that snow uh, potential up in the Northern Plains, that could be a question mark. Is it going to be heavy? A couple of models have shown. So why not take a look at a third model, right? That is one way to look. And one of the, my favorite models to check out when it comes to this big picture type of thing is the Canadian model. So here we go. I'm gonna load up the Canadian model, and we're going to take a look at this one real quick. Sometimes it's good to get a third opinion, right? And it never hurts. And when we do look for consensus on the models for the track and timing of such events, we can gain or lose confidence. And here we go. The Colorado low or Wyoming low in this case drifts out into Kansas. We have the development of severe weather, central parts of Kansas, even into Nebraska potentially, but primarily into Oklahoma. So again, three models showing Oklahoma being a bullseye for the potential for some very strong thunderstorms, including all modes of severe weather. That includes hail, damaging straight line winds, flash flooding, and the potential for some strong tornadoes with this system. Now, as we go into the night hours, it shifts and lifts. It does move east. And as we head into your Tuesday afternoon and evening, the storm threat will be here from East Texas, right through portions of Arkansas, the boot heel of Missouri, and on into Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa and Indiana later in the evening. This model shows the snow risk really doesn't take place until we get to Saturday. So with regards to all of the things that we've looked at for severe weather potential, the severe weather potential is definitely there on all three models in the Central Plains. A lot of things can change, but be weather aware and know where you can get your severe weather information if you happen to be out and about on tax day in the Central Plains, Texas, Oklahoma, on into Arkansas, and even parts of Kansas and possibly eastern Nebraska as well. As we go into the evening, I think even parts of the western reaches of Iowa could see some potential for severe weather. Now, up in the northern plains, where good old Hutch is from. Hi, everybody. Let's take one look at the snow potential with this. And again, it's very early, but we're going to look at one model. And that model will be the uh, American model here. And as we zoom into our area, you're going to see a chance uh, for some inclement weather 
in the form of flakiness. Now, there's going to be cold air on the backside of this storm system, but as we zoom into the regional view here of the Northern Plains, real quickly, we're going to analyze a couple of things with this. And again, this model this far out, a lot can change, but we have this wraparound effect into Northern parts of Minnesota. So Ely, Minnesota into the Boundary Waters, we're definitely having a chance for some snow as we go into the day on Wednesday. One thing is for sure, the 70s of the weekend will be gone as we go into the middle of the week and it looks cold and there could be wind and snow combined. See these isobars, these black lines showing a very strong north flow. This tight of an isobar pattern would show me that the winds will certainly have the capability in the, well, the flat plains of North Dakota to see gusts over 30 miles per hour with flakes flying at the same time. It does not look like heavy snow on this particular model run. But when we take one look at the snowfall potential, this is only potential at this very early stage of the game, that do not pay any attention to the amounts that you see on this. There does look like there could be some insignificant accumulations under an inch or two for many, and a few could see a little bit more than that particularly in the boundary waters in the arrowhead of Minnesota, where the colder air will arrive first. So that is a look at this weather situation as we head into next week. But between now and then, we have some awesome heat to enjoy here in the Northern Plains. Some spring fever will hit for many. But don't forget, as things change heading into next week, we have that risk of severe weather for our neighbors in the Central Plains and all the way to the east into the Ohio and Mississippi River Valleys and a chance for some mid to late week snow showers across the north. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. It's a pleasure to visit with you about the weather. Drop a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. And again, I sure appreciate your likes and subscriptions right here to my channel and check out some of my other videos and maybe learn a little bit more about me uh, by watching some of the playlists that I'm posting right up top. Thanks so much.